Yeah. 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 Uh. Cause I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. So tell me, girl, I'm on the way. So I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. So tell me, girl, I'm on the way. Say I'm on the way. Yeah. You ain't gotta say shit. Just run down, down, down. Yeah. Say you ain't gotta say shit. Yeah. Say. Cause I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. So tell me, girl, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. Tell the girl, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. Yeah. Don't no matter where you are, cause I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. Yeah. Had a conversation with Shorty, never met before. Damn, she looking good. Damn, she she looking had a homegirl with her, but conversation led to another one. Oh, I'm talking to both like that, I don't really know who to choose. What's up, though? What's up? Niggas all on them trips. We was spending up them chips. Yeah. Pulling up in them whips. Yeah. Late nights, we would dip. Yeah. You know we was rockin', we turned up all night, yeah. Scratches on my back, ain't no pussy's ass, yeah. Every time she around, it's going down, yeah. We all in the hotel room, scratches on my back, man, we on the wall. Niggas call downstairs like, man, this noise can't take too much more. Give it to me one time, one time, yeah. I'm about to beat it up, open the list so I can eat it up, cause I'm on the way, yeah. I'm on the way, say tell me girl I'm on the way, say I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way, say tell me girl I'm on the way, say I'm on the way, yeah, you ain't gotta say shit, just run down, 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 yeah, you ain't gotta say shit, yeah, cause I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way, say tell the girl I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way, tell the girl I'm on the way, say I'm on the way, yeah, don't no matter where you are, cause I'm on the way, I'm on the way. Water whipping with the diamonds, goddamn me, you know that she shining. Know that she yelling the shit, and I was just trying to hit her up with perfect timing. Damn, I know she want to live again. She was all on the live again. Shit, she so alive again. Jump up on the pole, do it real quick, make a couple dollars in. And I know you been on this here, girl, long time, time, time. And I know this thing here been all over your mind, mind, mind. We finna get it in. This is her favorite song, her and a friend, yeah Matter of fact, y'all both can go, open that door, y'all can come in, yeah Me and my niggas, we got a hundred thousand wrapped in rubber bands on it up Couple of bitches checking us out, shit, you know we don't give a fuck I need another one, purple and double cars, shit. I need another one, tell them to pull it up Cause I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way Say tell me girl I'm on the way, say I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way Say tell me girl I'm on the way, say I'm on the way, yeah You ain't gotta say shit, uh, down, 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 yeah Say you ain't gotta say shit, yeah, say I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way Say tell the girl I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way, yeah, I'm on the way Tell the girl I'm on the way, say I'm on the way, yeah Don't no matter where you are, cause I'm on the way, yeah I'm on the way, yeah. Last week, if you that asked yeah. me for you to have me, I move my Addy and change my Abby. She calls me Daddy, my bestest bag. She the freak I was seeking to keep me weak on the evening and get no sleep on the weekend. Between her and she be licking. When we meet, ain't no greeting because the best lady squeaking got me harder than semen. She working hard for my seat. Yeah, you nasty, sweet as hell, but still sassy. Been up all night, already past three. If you in need of a break, just ask me. And I don't mind being inside or even vibe you live inside of the ride with you and then rewind the time. I'm first laying eyes on you and hoping time expires. I'm deep up inside. I'm gonna sit it down, 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 sit it down slow. Feed it for a minute now, minute now, minute now, minute now, whoa. Mm. Think of how I wanna hit it now, hit it now, hit it now, hit it now, stroke. Ricky little mama getting silly now. Screaming while she riding, be my favorite sound. Yeah, I'm gonna sit it down, 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 sit it down slow. Feed it for a minute now, minute now, minute now. 
I'm in an elbow. Yeah. Look at how you wanna hit it now, hit it now, hit it now, hit it now, hit it now stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Mama getting silly now. Yeah. Screaming while she about to be my favorite sound. Slow. Yeah. Jaded little freak. Always wanna go in public, dining them up. But she's something like Julie. She had no reflex. Top tip tender. I never reject. She got my respect. I love her tender guy, Sarah J. Hands. All we had to ask, make you catch a little plan. Body of Katrina or Julissa, Alisa, Khadija, slash Alisa. Gave it to Rita before she had to leave her visa. Gina was the opposite of Katie. She was sick. Favorite number up for Haley. Every kid give a plaza for Daisy. Three girl session was enough, so for Katie. Wanda, Carla, sexy Rhonda, Tasha, Jenny, Becky, Legs, or Karma, Honor, Slash, Tate, that's my sponsor. Get your Oscars, role playing serious, patient doctor. Wanna bend it over now in the dodging. Have you yelling loud while the speaker's not? I'm gonna sit it down, 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 sit it down slow. Beat it for a minute now, minute now, minute now, minute now, what? Think of how I wanna hit it now, hit it now, hit it now, hit it now, stroke. Freaky little mama getting silly now. Screaming while she riding be my favorite sound. Slow. What up? Let me turn that echo off. What up, people? Can y'all hear me? I'm testing a new software. Let me make sure y'all can hear me. Let me hear myself. Yeah, I can't hear myself, so we are good. What's good, people? What's good, people? What's good, people? D well, what's good, my guy? Nody Gain in the building. Shout out to y'all. Much love to y'all for coming through. I am in between work shifts right now. So I'm gonna try not to be long because I gotta get back to work. <laughs> but Max, what's good? Listen, I gotta go live right now because I'm so sick and tired of Cowboys fans who just consistently complain about everything, especially Dak and especially Diggs. I'm sick of y'all, man. So uh, we gonna get right into that, man. And I'm a, I'm a spit some facts for you real quick and then I'm gonna go back to work but before we do that shout out to Rogue Energy for sponsoring the stream <laughs> shout out to the Nodi Game Max everybody that should be at work or could be at work but you watching me shout out to y'all let me give you a hell yeah for that give me a hell yeah I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. My OBS has been tripping lately. Uh, that's the reason I haven't been streaming. But Rogue Energies, thank you for sponsoring the stream. Shout out to y'all. I am actually working on some more sponsors. So stay updated on that. But in the meantime, Rogue Energy, shout out to them. Make sure you go to RogueEnergy.com. Use promo code DOPE. That'll give you all discounts on all products. So shout out to Rogue Energy once again, man. So, let's get right into it. Like I said, I'm not trying to be here all day. So, let's get right to the to the topic at hand. First of all, we're going to start off with the latest in the NFL. Let me make sure I get this screen up. I don't know if y'all can see it. It's not showing up yet. Give me one second. I'm going to get it up for you. And it's showing up big. For whatever reason. Let me fix this. Now I just edited all this stuff. As soon as I get on stream, it changed the size. <laughs> That's what happens. That's what happens. It just randomly decides to change on you from time to time. Uh let me get this up real quick, y'all. Hold on, man. We gonna do this the right way. I wanna make sure y'all able to see this. We gonna actually make this side smaller because it's unnecessary stuff over here. Here we go, blow it up. So, hopefully y'all can see that. If not, oh well. For now, this is what it is for today. Like I said, I don't have a lot of time. I gotta go back to work, unfortunately. So we're gonna get right into these scores. If I'm not dropping. KBS is right now. Good Lord, OBS. All right. 
I got the green light again from OBS. This thing here is a handful, man. The part of streaming nobody tells you about is the technical issues that goes on with when you're trying to do different softwares and things like that. But I got the green light back. We are back on OBS. So let's get right into it, man. Week 17 is in the books. Let's go over some scores. The Bills taking out the Falcons 29 to 15. The Bills are 10 and 6. Going straight to the playoffs. The Chicago Bears take out the Giants in the game nobody cared about. 29 to 3. Unless you're a Giants and Bears fan. So, you know, congratulations to the Bears. Seth Rollins, aka. Uh, the Bengals in a big game come back from a 20-point lead down to beat the Chiefs in a shocker, in my opinion. I thought the Chiefs was going to blow them out the way the game started. 34-31. to 31. Shout out to the Bengals for that. The Titans take out the Dolphins in their seven-game winning streak, 34-3. to three. The Titans now have um, home field advantage in the AFC without Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry just came back. So that's about to be crazy for the AFC because Derrick Henry. What does it feel like to sell your car to back. Carvana? I am getting a commercial from It feels ESPN. amazing. Can you get a great offer in seconds? You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> I get a random commercial from ESPN that want to take over my stream. Back to what I was talking about. The Raiders in a very close game and a very important game to the Raiders. They beat the Colts at home 23 to 20. They are in a tie right now. Um, they are 9 and 7. The Colts are 9 and 7. And I believe the Chargers are the third team in that tie. They're also 9 and 7. So it's a big weekend for these three teams coming up. The Patriots killed the Jaguars 50 to 10. I mean, did you expect anything else? <laughs> We're going to get into some more of this game right here. The Buccaneers escape the Jets 28 to 24. A lot of drama from this game with Antonio Brown. And the fact that the Jets almost beat them was, yeah, we, we're going to get into that. Let's move on. Eagles 9-7 take out the Washington football team, soon to be the Admirals. That's what I'm hearing. They're soon to be the Washington Admirals. We'll find out in February once they make the announcement. Eagles are locked in the playoffs now, so shout out to the Eagles, man. I give them a hand clap for that. So you glad to see Derrick Henry back? Yeah, that's it's good to see him back. It's scary to see him back, but it's good to see him back. The Rams, up, well, the Rams beat the Ravens in a very close game, man. Poor Ravens, they just dealing with so many injuries, man. Uh, but they're fighting. They're fighting. They still got a chance, a slim chance to make the playoffs, but a lot got to happen this weekend for that to happen. But the Rams, 12-4, they move into the second place in the NFC. Um, 20 to 19 over the Ravens, man. Poor Ravens. I, I feel bad for them. Chargers big win over the Broncos. They needed this win, 34 to 13. They're nine to seven. Like I said, they're in a the tiebreaker, three-way tie right now between them, the Raiders, and the Colts. The 49ers beat the Texans, so they're still fighting for a playoff position, which right now is looking good because if it ended today, they're in the playoffs. Cardinals, we're gonna get back to that one. Um, Saints take out the Panthers, keep their playoff hopes alive. Eight and eight Saints. Uh, they beat the Panthers 18 to 10. Carolina just fell off the map. <laughs> they started, I believe, 4-0. Then they got to Dallas, lost. Dallas exposed them. And then Cam came back. They beat Arizona. We thinking, oh, Carolina might be worth something. They ain't won a game since. So, you know. <laughs> Ha, it's it got to be tough being a Carolina fan, I guess. Seahawks blow out the Lions 51-29 in a game that doesn't matter. The Vikings get blown out by the Packers 37-10. Uh, and then we get to the Browns losing to the Steelers at home. Both teams are out of the playoffs, so it doesn't matter. That might be Big Ben's last game in Pittsburgh, but we'll see. He really hasn't confirmed that he's retiring, but for right now, that's the thought process of it. And then the final game, Cardinals take out the Cowboys. Both teams are 11 and 5. Cowboys had a chance to sure up, you know, the number two seed, and, you know, they lost. So now Cowboys are number four seed, Arizona's number five. 
with the same record, 11 and 5. Arizona did not have D Hop and missed a couple of cornerbacks, but they still managed to come in and win. The referee, Push, what's good, my guy? Appreciate you joining, man. Let's get a shout out to Push real quick. Let me do that real quick before I forget. Wow, there it is. Shout out to Push, play the DJ, man. Always coming through showing love, man. That's the guy right there. Always coming through showing love, man. That's the guy right there. Make sure you follow him. Stream Elements. Just put the link up in the chat. So, yeah, the Cardinals take out the Cowboys 25-22 in an important game that I felt like the Cowboys really had a chance to put their foot on the throats of the Cardinals and lock up that number two seed. Now, the court, since the Cowboys lost, they dropped all the way down to the fourth seed, uh, which means it's a good chance they end up playing Arizona again, again, in the playoffs, first, first matchup. And being a fourth seed is not something you want because you're either going to match up with Arizona or you're going to match up with the Rams. <laughs> so... Cowboys still have a slim chance to get to the third or two seed this weekend if they beat Philly and if a couple other teams lose. But for the most part, it looks like they're going to be locked in the fourth seed. And first game is either going to be against Arizona or the Rams. That's not what you want. So, but it is what it is. They had a chance. They choked. The refs were trash in that game. But you got to learn to play through that. Simple. Simple as that. Now, I'm mainly here to talk about Cowboys fans or so-called Cowboys fans and even some of the haters. But before we do that, let's let's go ahead and get this guy. Let's go ahead and get this guy out the way. Um, Antonio Brown, man. Ah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you say? What do you say about... Antonio Brown. Going up, going, going, hey, shout out to King for that sub, man. 11 months straight. <laughs> shout out to King, man. I'm going to let that finish, player. Hey, that's longer than I thought. All right. Appreciate King. Yo, yo, Let's yo, go. Yo. All right, now back to what I was talking about. Antonio Brown. What? <laughs> he. This is him in the middle of a game, walking off the field, shoulder pass off, jersey off. He naked up top. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> this is Antonio Brown walking off the field in the middle of a game. Now, it's a lot that's happened since. A lot of people are upset. A lot of people are coming down at Antonio Brown. And I'm like, all right, he claimed that he was hurt and he was injured. And let's, let's, I don't want to fast forward. Let me go back. So Sunday, when this happened, everybody on my Facebook and Twitter immediately said, oh, this is CTE. This is brain issues. He got head trauma. Um... You know, he got mental health issues, yada, yada, right? This is, as it was happening, literally like 10 minutes after this happened, you just start diagnosing him with everything. Oh, brain injury this, crazy. Uh, mental health, uh, yada, yada. And I'm just like, bro, relax. Give it time to let the story come out before you start judging. Because we don't know what goes on the sideline. We know Antonio Brown has a history of doing stupid stuff can't be denied Antonio Brown has done a lot of stupid stuff in the past but we don't know what happened in this situation so let some stuff come out first before you start saying oh this that and you just cast judgment on somebody bet um, I believe it was Tuesday first of all after this Bruce Arians got up on a podium right after the game and said Oh, Antonio Brown is done. He's no longer a Tampa Bay Bucks uh, player. He's done. This was Sunday, right after the game, right? All right, so moving along. I think it was Tuesday. Adam Schefter comes out as 
make a report that this is what he heard that he was injured. Antonio Brown was told to get in the game, and Antonio Brown said, "Hey, he was too injured. His ankle was hurting. He wasn't going back in." After that, they told Antonio Brown, "If you're not going back in, because we don't think you really injured, if you're not going back in the game, get off the field. You're off the team." That's what Adam Scheffner, an NFL insider, reported on ESPN Live. I think it was Tuesday, right? It might have been Monday, but I'm, I saw it Tuesday. That's what Adam Scheffner said. So, and then following that, Antonio Brown and his lawyer, and uh, not his lawyer, but his uh, agent, and all them was like, hey, I was hurt. That's why I didn't want to go back in. They told me to get off the field. The coaches told me if I don't go back in I'm off the team and I have proved that I was injured that's that's what Antonio Brown and his camp was coming out with right so I'm people are steady oh he walked off on the team he quit he quit and I'm just like yo give it time Antonio Brown started posting text messages between him and Bruce Arian we all know if you watch any type of football or if you've been following Tampa Bay for the last two years you know Bruce Arians never wanted Antonio Brown to begin with. So the fact that Bruce Arians was like, or Antonio Antonio Brown said Bruce Arians told him to you off the team and get off. Uh, we started maybe 10 minutes ago, Rob. Um, Bruce Arians told Antonio Brown to get off the field. I'm not really surprised by that. So again, I kept telling people, wait, wait, wait. Let's see what happens. Let's see the full story. So we get all the way up to Thursday. Antonio Brown has not been cut from the team. Which, uh, let's let's remind you, Bruce Arian Sunday said he's done. That he was done. Wow, take him out. He's done. But all the way up until Thursday, he was still on the roster. So when Antonio Brown saying he was injured. And then the fact that he wasn't cut, even though the coach announced Sunday that, oh, we're done with him, it made me think. I was like, well, what if Antonio Brown is telling the truth? Because when you think, if you know NFL rules, you technically can't cut an injured player. So the fact that the coach got up and announced that he was off the team Sunday and all the way up until Thursday, he was still on the team. That made me think, like, what if what if Antonio Brown is telling the truth? So, like, people were going on a rage. Antonio Brown is, you can't, don't defend him. He's trash. He's this. And I'm like, yo, I'm not defending him. I'm just saying, wait before you cast judgment because we don't know what's going on. We wasn't on the sideline. We don't have microphone or camera footage, you know, to tell us what was happening. We could just go off of what we knew at that point. But, okay, and then Tony said they didn't want to release him because they didn't want another team to pick him up. They can still pick him up now. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Then word comes out after he got released that, you know, Bruce Arian comes out with his, his story and Tampa come out with their story. That hey Antonio Brown never did go to the doctor and anything like that, and I'm I'm like 50 50 I'm still 50 50 on what's what, because as much as I want to believe Tampa because AB has a history, and so I'm leaning towards believing Tampa. It's still some fishy stuff because AB did not practice up until the game. Why did he not practice if he wasn't injured? Why was he on an injured list during the week of if he wasn't injured? You, it was, you know, it's just, it's, it's like, I feel like both of them are telling half truths here. Like, I feel like both of them are telling 50% of the truth. So it's, it's, it's real iffy. So all the people that's like either attacking Tampa or you're attacking AB, he said they have to file it to the NFL, plus they were trying to get out paying his, his contract wasn't guaranteed anyway. 
That's an easy get out, Tony. Uh, shout out to Get the Tables too, by the way. Let me make sure I do the shout out. They tried to give him a seat, doctors in NY, and he refused. I believe that. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Like I said, I'm 50-50. I still. I'm still waiting on some more. Like I. I know the truth is going to eventually come out, but I'm not. I'm just telling people, don't immediately go off on Antonio Brown. Don't immediately go off on Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Bruce Arian until the 100% truth come out. Even with Right now, it's he say, she say type stuff. Because now, since Antonio Brown said what he said, they get cut. He get cut Thursday, and all of a sudden, Bruce Arian is telling his side, which I feel like Bruce Arian could have said that Sunday or Monday. That's all I'm saying. It's still iffy. Like, Antonio Brown, yes, he does have the history. So, I get it. You're quick to attack Tony Brown. That's the same way with how people attack, you know, anybody with history. Like Kyrie Irving and Dez Bryant back in the day. T.O. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying, right now, it's still iffy to me. Because now it's just he say, she say. Because Antonio Brown, he was on the injured list. And he didn't practice the week of. And I do believe Antonio Brown has an attitude and maybe he was mad that he wasn't getting the ball and decided not to go in. It's like it's and yeah, he ran <laughs> he ran and jumped off the field. <laughs> so how injured are you? You know, so it I don't know. I'm leaning towards Tampa right now, but it's still I'm not gonna be the type that get on social media and be like, A B is trash, he's garbage, he quit on his team. I'm not gonna just down talk this guy yet until the full truth come out. So that's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. You can lean one way or the other, but don't trash talk the other side. Don't trash talk the Bucks, which I've been saying. Don't trash talk AB until you know the full situation. That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. So moving along, moving away from AB, let's get him off the screen. I'm not saying nothing else because that's going to lead to arguments because people are going to think I'm on one side or the other, and I'm not. So I'm just saying wait it out. That's all I'm saying. And we'll see what we'll see what happens with AB. Where, if he goes somewhere else, if not, this dude got a lot surrounding him right now. He got an Instagram model coming out saying that, <laughs> you know, telling some business that she he got – she paid him, or he paid her, I should say, um, what, $10,000 to be quiet and not talk about the stuff that they did. I'm just like, now she's cloud chasing and trying to get money from AB. So I don't like that at all. That's trash to me. But as far as the Tampa Buck situation, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's see what happened. I mean, the Jets were playing... That's tough, though, Tony, because you still got Mike Evans on the team. You still got Gronk on the team. Like, and he got those five, what, targets, what, early? So, I don't know. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. So, let's go into, we back on Dak Prescott. Shout out to Dak Prescott. I almost get tired of having to say the same thing about this guy over and over and over. And I'm talking to the so-called Cowboys fans who gets on my face, my personal Facebook anytime I post something positive. You don't even have nothing to do with that sometimes. I could just say, I think the Cowboys are going to be Philly or I'm glad the Cowboys 11 to 5. Oh, but Dak did this. Dak did that. Dak need to do this. Dak need to do that. Bruh, shut up. I'm not even talking about Dak right now. <laughs> and I'm tired of having the same conversation about Dak. Like, what do you want from this guy? I understand that 
for whatever reason, since he got paid, y'all automatically assume he was supposed to turn into Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. And he's never been Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. And he probably never will be Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Like, ever since he got his contract, people have put him on this type of pedestal that he doesn't belong on. Like, he's not Pat Mahomes. He's not Brady. He's not Rodgers. Those are three one-of-a-lifetime type of guys. Like, he's not. Just because he got paid what he got paid doesn't mean he's going to automatically turn into these guys. He got paid what he got paid because that's what the QB market was at the time of his contract. It's simple. Than, it, it's simple. He got paid what he got paid because that's where the QB market was for a franchise quarterback. It's not hard to understand. Josh Allen just got paid the same type of contract. Pat Mahomes making the most money in NFL history. But again, it's Pat Mahomes. Josh Allen is that much better than Dak? What, what do y'all think? He said a lot of fans expect too much when players get contract. Exactly. Like, he's all of a sudden supposed to turn into Aaron Rodgers and them. Like, he's never been that. He's never been that. Y'all forget, this guy was drafted in the fourth round. Not the first, not the second, not the third. He was drafted in the fourth round and was supposed to be the third string quarterback and got thrown into the fire immediately because Romo got hurt and Kelly Moore got hurt. He was thrown into the fire immediately and he wasn't supposed to be. And he went 13 and three his first year and got to the playoffs and barely lost to Aaron Rodgers. And you know why he lost to Aaron Rodgers? It's because Aaron Rodgers simply had the ball last. <laughs> Y'all don't believe me? Y'all don't remember? Y'all don't remember? Ze- what that mean? He still got Zeke now. What they doing now? Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. He got Zeke and Tony Pollard now. So let's let's get into this game. Matter of fact, because I, I, I want to show y'all stats. I always give you stats to back up what I say. So let's get this up real quick. I don't know why he's talking, why they showing this video. But this is the 2016 playoff game versus the Packers. 34-31. Cowboys lost on a winning field goal by the Packers. Let's get into the numbers. Aaron Rodgers, because people say the people that's arguing and complaining about Dak all the time, the one thing they always tell me is, oh, Dak don't never step up when he go head to head against another QB. That's false. That's false. Playoff game, Aaron Rodgers. This is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's well known. Dak is a fourth round draft pick in a rookie season. In a rookie season that he was supposed to be the third stream quarterback. And he went head to head with Aaron Rodgers. Let's get into it. Aaron Rodgers, 28 for 43, 355 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, 96.6 overall rating. Very good game. Defense could do nothing with Rodgers. Couldn't do nothing. Couldn't do nothing with Rodgers. Let's get into Dak Prescott. When this stupid ass stop playing. 24 of 38. 302. Three touchdowns. One interception. A 103 overall rate. Get- Let me remind you, this is a fourth round draft pick. Third string quarterback. Dak Prescott in his rookie season going up against Aaron Rodgers. Head to head. 24. First ever playoff game. 24-38, 3-0-2, three touchdowns, 103 rating. Aaron Rodgers, 28-43, 355 yards, two touchdowns, one pick, 96 overall rating. He was sacked twice for 11 yards. That's what that mean. Uh, that's what that mean, Rob. He was sacked twice for 11 yards. Now, this is before Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, all them. 
at this time, y'all remember when everybody was saying Dez was washed up and Dez and Dak couldn't connect? Dez had his best playoff game of his career with Dak Prescott. Y'all don't believe me? You ain't got to believe me. The numbers are right here. Dez Bryant, who was washed up and couldn't, you know, him and Dak can't connect, right? Nine catches, 132 yards, two touchdowns on 12 targets. Come on, bro. But they can't connect. Dez was washed, right? Let y'all, let the people tell it. The IWC, let me just say the IWC for everything now. <laughs> Thank you. We had Terrence Williams and Cole Beasley was there. That, that's a plus. But um, Dez Bryant was washed up, right? Dak don't know how to connect with Dez, right? Nine catches, 132 yards, two touchdowns in a playoff game. That's Dez's best career playoff game in the NFL. He had it with Dak, not with Romo. But Dak is the problem, right? I bet. Now let's move on to this year when Dak went up head-to-head -head against Brady. Dak lost. The Cowboys lost 29-31. They lost by two. You know why they lost by two? Because Tom Brady simply had the ball last. He said Dez was playing like you that day. Stop the cow. <laughs> they lost because Tom Brady had the ball last. And just like the Packers game in 2016, they kicked the game-winning field goal because the defense couldn't stop nobody. Couldn't stop nobody. Let's look at the numbers. Tom Brady, 32 for 50. 379 yards, four touchdowns, two picks, 97 overall rating. Dak Prescott, 42 for 58. 403 yards, three touchdowns, one pick, 101 rating. But Dak can't compete with the top quarterbacks, right? That's what y'all tell me. That's what y'all tell me. Stop. Trash. I don't want to hear that. That's a false narrative that y'all give out because y'all listen to Stephen A. Smith, who gets paid to troll Cowboys. And y'all listen to Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless, who get paid to troll and talk about the Cowboys. That's all they talk about. Tom Brady, the Cowboys, LeBron James. That's it. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. That's all you hear. That's all you hear. But I'm tired of talking about it. And since y'all don't, since people don't like believing me, the people that's arguing on my Facebook, uh, anytime I say something about Dak, let's go into, <laughs> exactly, Rob. Let's, let's go to somebody else. Somebody that's in the sports business and been in it for years. Let's go to Sean and RJ from CBS Radio. Well, formerly CBS Radio down here. 105.3 The Fan. Shout out to them. And let's listen to what they had to say about that. So that was uh, that was circulating yesterday on social media. Well, Dak is 8-17 and 17 against uh, teams uh, uh, with winning records since uh, 2017. <laughs> Uh, and all these fans that, that, that come at us with this on social media, I, I just want to let you know, you are holding Dak to a standard that you're not holding any other quarterback to. I'm going to read you the records of other quarterbacks who have a, against teams that finished the season above 500. All right. This is all going into this season. So I'm not. This this season's not a part of this. Okay, and Dak is eight and seventeen. Eight and seventeen including now, including this year. Including this year. All right. Eight and seventeen. Aaron Rodgers, thirty six and forty three. Oh. Is that a winning record? That's seven games under. Josh Allen, seven and ten. <laughs> Justin Herbert, one and five. <laughs> Kyler Murray, three and eleven. <laughs> Deshaun Watson. 7 and 19. Russ, 32 and 27. Matt Ryan, 31 and 55. Matt Stafford, 8 and 67. <laughs> That's like not real. Jared Goff, 14 and 17. Like, these are all quarterbacks that have either A, won a title, B, been to a Super Bowl, C, been the overall number one pick in the draft 
or D, been said to have been better than Dak Prescott at some point? So why is Dak held to a standard that the other elite quarterbacks in the National Football League are not? Like, the list of guys, if Drew Brees has a losing record all time against winning teams. The list of guys who have a winning record against plus 500 teams, and I'm not talking about being 1 or 2-0. and oh. I'm talking about having a full career of it. I mean, we're talking about Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson and, and like, Ben. Mm. That's it. So, like, we can't hold Dak to one standard and not hold, I don't know, every other quarterback in the league to the same one. It's just not fair. So, miss me with your he's 8-17 and 17 against winning teams. I mean, that's a real stat. He is. I'm, I'm going to cut it off there. I'm going to cut it off there. That's not my words. That's RJ Choppy from Sean and RJ 105.3 The Fan. You can hear them on the Odyssey app, National. They are now national, so shout out to them for being a national, you know, radio show now. So I got that right. And if that's not enough, let's, let's bring up, let's bring up Joy Taylor. Shout out to Joy. George Taylor had some takes on Dak Prescott recently because they asked her, you know, if Jerry Jones, should Jerry Jones be happy with Dak Prescott right now? So let's listen to what she had to say. Figure out what the standard is for Dak's success. Does he have to be Tom Brady? Does he have to be Aaron Rodgers? Does he have to be Matthew Stafford, who has done exactly nothing in the postseason? Because those are the quarterbacks for the teams that are higher than his team in the NFC this season. What has Zach done since he's been paid? Came back from a major injury, won the division, they're 11-5, and five, and as I mentioned, they're fourth in the conference. Why shouldn't Jerry be happy? What, what more does Dak need to do in this particular moment for Jerry Jones to be happy with. That is a successful season as of right now. Now, if they get into the playoffs and they lose badly in the first round, we can have a different conversation. But up until this point, Dak has been wildly successful. He's got to be Aaron Rodgers. He's got to win the NFC and have a bye and have the best record in the NFL in order for it to for Jerry Jones to be happy? I don't know. Of course I believe Jerry Jones. I would be happy. I am happy with Dak Prescott. I don't think that Dak Prescott is Tom Brady. I don't think he is Aaron Rodgers. But Dak Prescott is doing what Dak Prescott does, which is win and win the division. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Thank you. So... These people that, because I know they go watch this video, they go see this clip on my Facebook, and they go still argue. So if you don't want to believe me, take it because I'm not ESPN. I'm not on the radio and on TV. I just gave you two people on the radio and on TV. And I really could have gave you more if I didn't have to go back to work right now. I would have saved some more videos, but like, what do you want? And these are, again, so-called Cowboys fans. I don't even hear from, like, the Cowboys haters about Dak, except maybe one guy. Everybody that's arguing with me about Dak are Cowboys fans. And I don't understand it. Like, why is it all, why is it all of a sudden Super Bowl or bust for Dallas when this team was just 5-11 and 11 last year? And you want to know one of the reasons? Why they were 5 and 11? Because Dak got hurt and did not play. So, this team coming in this season, everybody had the Cowboys winning eight or nine games top, right? If y'all don't believe me, I will post clips on my Twitter um, throughout the day after this stream. If y'all don't believe, Shannon Sharp, Stephen A. Smith, uh, Skip Bayless, who even said he's a Cowboys fan. A lot of people had us. Everybody on ESPN and Fox Sports had us winning eight or nine games. Nobody had us winning ten or more at the beginning of the season. Everybody said the defense was going to suck because it sucked last year with 
And the reason it sucked last year, let's be for real. Mike Nolan was trash. That's all it was. They got talent. They had talent last year. One of the talents you let go, which I was pissed about, was Cheeto Bay Awuzie. You let him go. Now he's the number one rated cornerback in the AFC. You could have had Cheeto and Diggs together. You could have had Cheeto and Diggs together. But I'm not going to vent on that right now. <laughs> I'm not going to vent on that right now. Um, nobody had us winning no more than 10 games. They are 11 and 5 with one game left to play. They locked up the division a long time ago. They locked up the playoffs a long time ago. And Cowboys fans are still complaining and still crying. And I just don't understand it. This is what y'all sound like. Oh my God! I'm tired of the Cowboys. Dad, don't do this. Dad, don't do that. I'm sick of that. Dad, this. Dad, that. Dad, this. We should be 16 and 0. We should be 17 and 0. I'm sick of the Cowboys. We do this every week. Every week. I'm sick of the Cowboys. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. All that whining. Shut up. You sound like a baby. <laughs> right. Hey, man. I'm, I'm updating the stream, bro. We got sound effects now. Let's go. And I'm going to use all of them. Shoot. I'm going to use all of them. Oh, and one of the sponsors that I'm working to get is from that this sound company that I just used to do the sound. So be on the lookout for that because hopefully if it comes through. If it comes through, then we good. But we'll see. But I'm done with the Dak. This will probably, hopefully this is my last time I have to vent about Dak and Cowboys fans. Let's get to the next guy. What up, Lizard? Let's get to the next guy on the Cowboys that I'm tired of hearing about. Uh, negative wise and this is coming from some Cowboys fans but mostly the haters on this one Trayvon Diggs shout out to Trayvon Diggs by the way so Trayvon Diggs has 11 picks right now he is one pick away from um, breaking the record for picks in the season so shout out to Diggs for that um, and I think he's going to get it D. Well, what's good? Oh, I already I said what's good to you early. My bad. But uh, he's one pick away, and I feel like he's gonna get it because um you hate the Diggs family. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why? But uh, oh, Alabama. Well, Diggs only went to Alabama. I don't know where. I can't remember where um Stefan Diggs went. But um. What is this notification I'm getting on my computer? I just get random stuff on my computer, man. And it won't go away either. But anyway, I'll do that later. Oh, you're a Saints fan. All right, I got you. But uh, Trayvon Diggs is one pick away from breaking the season record for most picks in the season. And every, I can simply just post Trayvon Diggs and talk about his interceptions. Oh, but he's giving up the most yards, you know, in NFL this year. Okay. Okay. He's also giving us multiple points. And he's in his second year, right? He's in his second year. And you want to cry about him giving up the yards. But when Marcus Peters got in the league, and he was leading the league in interceptions, you weren't complaining about Marcus Peters giving up the yards he gave up. You wasn't talking trash about Marcus Peters. Y'all was saying how much of a beast he was when he led the league in interceptions um, in Kansas City. And when he went to Baltimore and caught all them picks his first season in Baltimore. Y'all wasn't talking about his yardage then. Y'all was only talking about the picks. And let's remind you, Trayvon Diggs is only a second-year DB. He He's only a second-year DB. Does he gamble a lot? Yes. And that is a downfall for him. He does gamble a lot. And a lot of it is him thinking that he got safety help over the top, which he really don't because KZ is decent, 
But KZ has failed Diggs <laughs> plenty of times over the top. Like that Patriots touchdown they got when him and Diggs was there. Diggs slowed up. Diggs slowed up thinking that KZ was about to get the pick and KZ missed. And you know what I'm saying? The Patriots end up scoring. <laughs> Stuff like that. Diggs take a lot of risks. I understand that. Yes, he's giving up yards. But I always tell them, I always ask them, how many touchdowns has he given up? He got 11 interceptions. How many touchdowns has Diggs given up? I will answer it for you. Four. That's it. Four. So, yes, he's given up yards. And they all come with, like, big plays. It's not like somebody get 15 catches against him. It's always a big play where he does give up yards. I get it. He take too many risks. I get it. He's a young DB. That's going to happen. You got to take the good with the bad. If he's going to give you 11 picks and give up four touchdowns, why are you complaining? Why are you complaining? He's not Dion. He's not Revis. He's not even Sherman. And Sherman took a lot of risk and wasn't beat because he had two Hall of Fame safeties above him and um, Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor. That's the only reason Sherman was able to get away with the risk he took when he was in Seattle in his prime. Because he had two Hall of Famers covering him in a safety position. And he was a zone corner. Sherman didn't travel with the number one receiver. He stayed in his zone. So, like, stop complaining, man. Stop. It's anytime somebody say anything about the Cowboys, it's oh, what about this? But you don't say that about nobody else. Nobody said what they saying about Trayvon like they did Marcus Peters. They didn't say Marcus Peters gave up the most yards, which he did. Nobody said that. So, like, stop. Cowboys fans, because a lot of Cowboys fans are doing this. You can't be a Cowboys fan if you complaining about everything, bruh. Like, shut up. Bruh. Seriously, shut up. Oh, I got one for you. Shut up, bitch. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, it's annoying. Every week, I got to hear the same thing. I'm, and people be calling. Dude called me. I had a homie call me during the game complaining about Dak while Dak was going and scoring touchdowns in the fourth quarter, bro. <laughs> I'm like, bro, are you are you even watching? He wasn't even watching the game. He was in the car calling me about Dak. <laughs> You're not even watching the game. Why are you calling me, FaceTiming me, bro? I don't get it. And, again, these are from so-called Cowboys fans, man. I don't understand. Um, yeah, Diggs is 11 interceptions. I think he's going to get 12 Saturday. Because he's going to be super aggressive. He might give up 200 yards on this one. Because I feel like he's going for that pick. <laughs> so, I'm just saying. We'll see what happens. But I think get, I think Diggs is going to break the record. So, shout out to Diggs, man. Much respect to him. Second year corner, man. Come on, man. And I had something else that I was going to say about Diggs. I just can't remember right now. But, I mean, it is what it is. Cowboys... Hopefully, they can, by s some miracle, find a way out of the fourth seed and move up to the third or second because I don't want to play Arizona or <laughs> the Rams in the first round. I don't. I won't. If we have to, I'm going to take Arizona. I'd rather play Arizona again versus the Rams if I had to choose. He said beat the Eagles so the Saints get 3-0 Brady. Hey. If that happens, I'm good with it. Honestly, Rob, I'm not going to lie to you. If that happens, I'm good with it. But if I had to choose between the Cardinals and the Rams first round, I'd rather play the Cardinals again. I know we just lost to them and yada, yada, but I would rather play the Cardinals. I don't think the Rams – I don't think the Cowboys match up good with the Rams. One, Cooper Cup is a beast, and he's a route receiver. He's the type of receiver that the Cowboys struggle with. So, and then you got Odell Beckham, who is a cowboy killer, no matter what team he's on. He killed us last year with the Browns. 
And y'all know how bad his career was with the Browns. So I don't want to see Cooper Cup. I don't want to see Odell first round. I don't I don't care about Matt Stafford. I'm not nervous about him. I don't want to see Aaron Donald, Von Miller, <laughs> um, Jalen Ramsey, and um all them. I don't want to see them first. I'm sorry. I'll take my chances with Chandler Jones and Isaiah Simmons and all them. I don't want to I, I want no parts of Aaron Donald in the first round. That's it. I'm going to just be honest with you. I want no parts of Aaron Donald in the first round. Cooper Cup just got you a fantasy ring. That's what's up, man. Shout out to Cooper Cup then. They rock. Oh, with the help of the Cowboys, D. There you go. There you go. So, uh, Cowboys are playing the Eagles tomorrow. And it's like 12 players on the Eagles team with COVID. And then the Cowboys got... Michael Parsons out. Uh, Tyron Smith is out. And Anthony Brown is out with COVID so far right now. And then, oh, Keanu Neal is out. And it's some more people out. So we'll see what happens with that, honestly. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how long the starters are going to play. Me personally, I will play them at least, at least three quarters. They got to fix... They got to get this offense together. And let's let's go back. I thought I was done with Dak. I'm not done. Let's go back to another reason why the Cowboys have been struggling and Dak has, you know, been struggling, even though he just scored three touchdowns last game. We can't run the freaking football. You said voice crack? Yeah, man. I'm in the garage, so I got my heat on. It's still it's warm, but I've been outside since five this morning, so throw getting a little dry. But um, we can't run a freaking ball, and teams are not playing us for the run like they were early in the season. Teams are now sitting back in zone coverage and just saying beat us with the run, and we can't beat nobody with the run right now. They can't block. They can't do nothing. We're getting 60 yards a game rushing, bro. That is trash. With Zeke and Pollard. So I don't want to hear no Zeke slandered either because Pollard is doing the same thing right now. Both of them are struggling. The run game and the offensive line right now in the run game is trash. Straight up. And if you got any common sense, you know that if you can't run the ball and teams know you can't run the ball, play action is out because they don't care about it. Um, All that other stuff and they're playing you for the pass and you can't run, it's going to be hard to throw the ball. Anybody with common sense know that. So for everybody jumping on Dak's back saying this and that, won't you talk about everybody else? We can't beat the Packers. Uh, I don't want to go to Green Bay, but if we have to play them, it's going to be in Green Bay because they're the number one seed. The defense, I'm not really nervous about with the Packers for whatever reason. I don't know why, because Aaron Rodgers is a MVP. I think he's going to win MVP again. And Devontae Adams is really the best receiver in the game right now. But for some reason, I just feel like the matchups with – I feel like we can match up with them for whatever reason. I don't know why. I just feel that way. Um, but the team I don't want to see is the Rams. <laughs> I just don't want to see the Rams right now, bro. I don't know. I don't know what it is about the Rams, but I don't want to see them right now. <laughs> Especially considering we can't run the ball. So if they can't run the ball tomorrow, I don't want to see the Rams. I feel like we can somehow sneak past Green Bay. As we are right now. I don't know why. I just got that feeling in my stomach. I don't know why. Honestly, I can't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I just feel like if we play Green Bay, I don't know. I just feel like we can match up with them. I don't know why, but it is what it is, man. Appreciate y'all coming through. I'm going to have to get ready to go back to work. Back outside. It is finally 40 degrees. It was 21 earlier. Man, freezing. So we got to the 40s. But um, shout out to y'all for coming through, man, for real. 
He say F work. Uh, no, I need my checks, bro. <laughs> I need my checks, buddy. I need my checks. Um, we'll see what happens this weekend. It's gonna be a busy weekend, man. Some important games. It's 29. Dang. It was 21 er, up until like the last 45 minutes, and they finally went up to the high, which is 41 for today. Uh, you say who that go Saints? We'll see, man. We'll see what happens with that. Um, if the Saints get in, I'm, I'm not gonna be mad at it, honestly. They've been fighting all year, man. Just like the Ravens been fighting all year. Both of them been dealing with a lot of injuries. So if they get in, I'm not mad at it, honestly. But uh, Cowboys fans, stop complaining. You got a team that's 11 and five, a team that nobody picked to win more than nine games at the beginning of the season. I was the only one and maybe like diehard Cowboys fans who got a podcast. I was the one on my podcast putting my neck out there saying, uh, Cowboys going to win the division. Cowboys going to win 10 or more games. All the experts said no. Nine games tops. We was 5-11 and 11 last year. If the Cowboys can win one or two playoff games, I'm really shooting for two. One is not good enough for me. If they can win two playoff games and somehow make it to the NFC title game, you got to you gotta be happy with that. Win or lose. This team was 5-11 and 11 last year. Oh, back to Diggs. I got one more thing about Diggs. You Cowboys fans. See, I'm starting to remember. I'm starting to remember. <laughs> Every time I say I'm going to get off, I remember something. Diggs, you know what you hear? Oh, like I said, he don't – he give up too many yards. Yeah, he got interceptions, but he give up too many yards. We had a guy that didn't give up any yards, but y'all ran him out of town – because he didn't get interceptions. Byron Jones. Y'all don't remember that? Let's not bring that up, right? Y'all forgot how y'all treated Byron Jones and say, oh, we don't need to pay him because he don't get picks. Y'all remember that, Cowboys fans? Oh, let's not pay Byron Jones. He don't get interceptions. But Byron Jones didn't give up yards. 2019, I got stats right here. 2019, Byron Jones, last season in Dallas. You know how many yards he gave up total that whole season? 383 yards. That's it. He played 15 games, gave up 383 yards the whole season. But Cowboys fans ran this guy out of town and was like, don't pay him because he don't get interceptions. But now... You got a guy in Trayvon Diggs who got 11 interceptions, clearly leads the league, and might set the record Saturday, tomorrow, but now y'all complaining because he gave up too many yards. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so what do y'all want? Do you want a lockdown cornerback like Byron Jones who don't give up yards, or do you want a guy – that's going to give up yards because he's taking risks, but he's going to get all the picks. What do you want? Make up your mind. Y'all are starting to act like wrestling fans. I'm a Cowboys fan, and I hate Cowboys fans. Y'all suck. <laughs> Cowboys fans suck. And this is coming from a Cowboys fan. Y'all suck. And I understand, I clearly understand why everybody else hates the Cowboys and their fans. Y'all suck. You complain about everything, and anytime we win, y'all, it's Super Bowl or bust. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. You was 5-11 and 11 last year. How all of a sudden you're a Super Bowl team with the same team? You're not a, it's not Super Bowl or bus. We're 11 and 5. Be happy. Stop complaining. If we get blown out first playoff game, then we can all be mad together. If we lose first playoff game, then we can all be mad together. I'm going to be mad with y'all. Because I expect to at least win one playoff game this year. You got to at least win one. 
If they don't win one, I will join y'all, gladly join y'all and complaining about Dallas. But Super Bowl or bust, y'all got to cut that out. You don't go from 5-11 and 11 to Super Bowl and bust the next year. It just don't happen. <laughs> We ain't been to the Super Bowl in 26 years. Lower your standards a little bit, my guy. <laughs> Lower your standards. Oh, I got, I got about 15 more minutes. Lower your standards, man. Lower your standards. This team ain't been to the NFC Championship game in 26 years. Why every time we make the playoffs, the Super Bowl a bus? Be realistic. You don't go 5-11 and and make the Super Bowl the next year. Nobody does that unless you're getting like Tom Brady. And then Tom Brady, who also added Gronk, Antonio Brown, and all these other weapons. We didn't add all these people. We got a, a good rookie in Michael Parsons, and our young players are playing better. And we got some cheap safeties. They were cheap for a reason. Lord, be realistic with your standards. That's all I'm saying. Now I'm done. <laughs> now I'm done. So, shout out to y'all for coming through. I just had to get that out of my system about Antonio Brown, about the Cowboys. Uh, like I said, man, it's certain stuff just annoying when you see it all the time. And people come on my personal page. It don't even have to do nothing with... It don't even have to do nothing with Dak or Diggs. I can just literally post something about the Cowboys in general. I can make a Madden post about the Cowboys. And the same people come on my page arguing about Dak and Diggs. And, but you're supposed to be a Cowboys fan. You're not. You're not. You're not. You just so happen to, you know, live in Dallas or Texas. And you just want to be able to say, if the Cowboys won, oh, that's my home team. That's all that is. You're not a Cowboys fan because you're not realistic. So a team that has a one hasn't been to the NFC East, I mean NFC Championship game in 26 years, all of a sudden supposed to win the Super Bowl. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So shout out to y'all, man. Once again, thank y'all for coming through. Know the game, man. Big day. Let's go. Yo. Uh, shout out to Rogue Energy for sponsoring the stream again, man. I'm working on more sponsors. Shoot your shots in 2022. That's all I'm going to tell you. Shoot so many shots in 2022 that stuff just start falling in your lap by default. That's what you need to do. If you got some goals or you got something you're trying to get, go after it. The worst they can do is say no. That's it. The worst they can do is say no. Or try again later. I'm just saying. Shoot your shots, man. 2022, you never know. You know, people checking out of here. You got stupid COVID all over the place. You got the legends, Betty White, Madden, and, you know, et cetera. They leaving out of here. You got young people leaving out of here. Rappers leaving out of here and getting shot up. Stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. If you got something you want to go after, go after it this year. Don't say, oh, I don't think I'm ready. You might, even if you not ready, just go, go for it. Cause if you're not ready, they're going to let you know what you're lacking. Who, whatever you go after, they nine times out of 10, not all of them going to tell you, but nine times out of 10, whatever you go after, they're going to tell you what you're lacking, what you need to work on to, you know, be in position to get it, whatever you're looking for. So shoot your shots, shoot so many shots that, Stuff just start falling in your lap by default. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, shout out to Push. Shout out to Get the Table. Shout out to Rob. Shout out to D-Webb. Shout out to Lizard. Shout out to everybody else. They came through. Max. Shout out oh, let me give a shout out to Max. I forgot Max. Let me make sure I get Max. You said Raid who? Oh, is he on now? He normally on like early in the morning. Let me let me see who on. Shout out to Max too, man. Make sure you follow him for wrestling fans. Be like GCW and things like that. Uh, make sure you go check him out. We go stick. I don't see Rhino. I see Kyle. We, we'll raid Kyle, even though he got 
freaking 1.8K right now. Shout out to Kyle, boy. Man, he he has been killing it lately, man. Shout out to him. So we'll raid him. But in the meantime, man, much love to y'all again. I appreciate y'all that come through. Uh, especially when it's just midday and it's unannounced. I appreciate y'all. I'm trying to work to be better on, um, you know, I try to work to be better on, you know, doing announcement streams, but my schedule is crazy. So shout out to y'all, man. And we're going to raid Kyle, man. So stay here and raid Kyle and y'all be safe, man.